How are we doing guys? Welcome back to another film. Right, we're still up in Scotland and this is my favourite kind of photography. Well, my favourite subject I should say. We're after otters again. Now, we've already managed a few pictures this week. We've got some stills. We've got some nice stills as well. Well chuffed with them. What we're doing today, we're out trying to get a bit of video footage because the thing is with auto photography, when I'm doing the stills, minimal kind of kit, no tripod, no screen on. I've just got my bean bag. You know the bean bags that I make. Link in the description below. Good Christmas present if you're thinking about one. And We've got the stills, we've got a few nice ones, I'll put them on, uh, I'll put one on now and then I'll put the rest on at the end. What I need to do now is get the video footage for you lot. So, different setup altogether. We've got the tripod, got the iFootage tripod, got the video head on, and I've also got the new 7 inch LCD screen, which is proving superb, real bonus, you know, I can get that uh, it's just a lot easier to see, you know, birds in flight and stuff that's moving rather than the little screen on the back of the camera. So I'm literally, I'm going as lightweight as I can because this is a heavy sucker. I've got the 300 on at the moment with the teleconverter. I've got the Tragapan ghillie blanket, which I'm going to utilise. I've got my camo gloves on, cami jacket, and that's it. That's all I've got. I'm gonna, I've got a bit of a scrim here I can put over my face to uh, get hunkered down and you know just hide me hide me mug shot if you will so that's about it like I said it's a different setup getting the video stuff so it's very difficult to do them both at the same time typical phone's gone off right so we're gonna have a wander down the tides on the ebb at the moment so the ideal time for doing otter photography I found in my experience is when the tide has run out because they like to come in on, on the kelp, uh, they catch a fish, they can come up, they're just not as keen to come up on the rocks. They will do, don't get me wrong. You know, I've seen them at the tide, but I've had more success doing the otter stuff when the tide is, is low. So we're going to have a, have a mooch along here, just a case of bringing the binos. And it's just a watching game, really. And you know, we've got a bit of a ripple on the water, so it's a bit more difficult to see them. So you've just got to have, uh, you know, get your eyes tuned in and just watch for that uh, that telltale plop of the tail. And yeah, we'll see if we can uh, see if we can see some of them. Beautiful, what a place! What a fantastic place! Yeah, I was saying about about. Photography. They've got to be my favourite subject to be honest now. I mean, I don't I don't know what it is about them. They're just captivating. They really are and it's it's they're so they're difficult to photograph as well. I mean you could be dead lucky. I mean the other day we were just we were driving along one of the locks and I managed to see one pulled over, got down on the on the shoreline and I you know I got some belting pictures. But that's an exception to the rule to be honest I mean they are a difficult animal to photograph they just don't make it easy for you and they're just gone in a you know in a, in a shot they've, they're out of there they've, they've gone under the seaweed and you don't see them again you've got to be really careful of the wind conditions you've got to be um, you know the wind's got to be blowing in your favor you know so that's a that's a massive consideration it really is right let's get this on my back and we'll go and see if we can get some video.
we've got one out in the water at the moment. So what I'm doing. I'm gonna blank it out just to break me. Not really. Got to be able to access the, the focus ring on the lens. Now, ideally, what we want, we want him to catch a fish big enough so that it'll maybe come in on this little strip of uh, rock here. That's what we're. That's the ideal scenario. A lot of the time they spend the time out on the water catching small fish, they can handle them out in the water. But occasionally, if they catch a big and they might catch a, a big crab, a lobster or a flatfish, and they'll head straight into shore. That's what we want.
as you can see, we're using the new screen, seven inch. Fantastic, it makes it so much easier. This is tiny in comparison. And also I've got focus assist on as well, which just gives me that, just an advantage really. You know, when something's moving quick, I can just use the focus assist on it, just in case of pressing one of the function buttons. Brilliant, real game changer. I'm gonna do a proper review on this in the future, but yeah, first impressions, well chuffed with it. Just need an otter in the screen now. <laughs> so there you have it. <laughs> I wasn't really expecting to see one then, to be honest, because the tide's still dropping. Like I said before, you know, you can see them at any time. It's better if it's low tide, but that one was just working its way along the fore, foreshore and uh, yeah got a little bit of decent footage of it again it's so important to get the wind in the right direction get it uh, get it blowing in your face and that that was a prime example and another thing as well it's <coughs> I don't want to get all preachy or anything but uh, those photographers wildlife photographers who are watching this you'll know exactly what I mean especially when you come up somewhere somewhere like this it's such a popular place and if ever you see anybody dressed like this in full camo with a camera probably best not to go up to them and say have you seen anything because it happened to me this morning and I just started I found a, a pair and one of them had caught caught a big flatfish and he was coming in just started filming someone came up behind me well I saw the reaction on the otters first before I saw the people have you seen out? I'll put the footage on now and you'll see exactly what I mean. You'll see the otter's reaction. And uh, well, before you knew it, that was it, it was gone. It could have been. The, the thing is, this kind of photography, it's, you, can, you can get the shot of a lifetime at any, any moment. And that would have been a, a belting shot. You know, if I could have got some stills of it eating that flatfish, I would, I would buzzing. And when I saw someone creep up behind me, <laughs> <laughs> I nearly swore actually, very nearly swore, but I didn't, uh, yeah, so landscape photographers, it don't really matter, you can ask them whatever you want, but when they dress like this, they dress like this for a reason, and yeah, just something to bear in mind, so anyway, not to worry next time. So that's our little short film on otter photography, a fantastic subject, they really are, they're uh, and they're difficult as well, they are a challenge, they really are a challenge. Uh, so yeah, give it a go, get yourself wherever wherever you might think there's otters. You know, these are these are coastal ones, we're up in Scotland. I'm, uh, I'm trying not to divulge any locations because they're under a lot of pressure and uh, yeah, people have to be mindful of that. Always think of the subject first and uh, yeah. Don't do any, you know, some people to do anything to get the shot and it's the wrong way to go about it. It really is the subject. They're, uh, they're in the box seat. They're the most important thing. So yeah, any aspiring wildlife photographers, bear that in mind. Right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and I'll leave some links in the description We've got all them box pouches, bean bags, think on, Christmas is coming, so get on the out Etsy shop and get them ordered quick because I can only make so many. Alright, thanks again, see you on the next one.